Hey guys, it's Mo. So today I'm going to show you how to make some paper clips using your Cricut Explore. Um, first off, I am in my recollections planner. I do have a review and like a semi setup video going on, but I'm going to show you specifically today how to make this Indiana paper clip right here. It's double sided. I'm going to show you how to make it out of any state that you want and even the whole United States if you want to, as well as this name paper clip, as you can see right here. And it is also double sided. So I'm going to jump right into the screencast and then I'll come back and show you how to assemble these. So as I said, this is going to be a tutorial using your Cricut Design Space as well as Inkscape plus some really cool fonts. So First off, you're gonna to need to download Inkscape. Inkscape is a wonderful free program that works a lot like Adobe Illustrator. It's an illustration program and it's free. And I think it's amazing to use with your Cricut Explorer. I think it's so great. And the reason I chose to do this project with the Cricut Explorer is because the Cricut Explorer can open an SVG file for free. If you were to do this with your Silhouette, you would need to upgrade the Silhouette Studio to um, designer edition to be able to open an SVG. And that's, I believe, a $50 upgrade. Sometimes you can find it a good deal, good different prices or whatnot. But Cricut Explore, Cricut Design Space opens an SVG for free. Also, you will need two fonts. So this font is called State Face. I like this font because it has all the fonts or all the states, all 50 of them, plus the United States here. And you can, you know, use your home state, like mine would be Virginia. I'm gonna use Indiana right now because I'm in Indiana. You'll also need a script font. The font that I chose to use that I think works really great for this DIY is a, uh, it's called Ballpark Wiener and it's from the font. And if you wanna see how your name would look, um, can you see this, an Erin Condren ad? Ugh. It's like you watch too many plan with me so you need a new planner. Um, so um, if you wanna see how your name looks, you just type it in this preview and hit enter and it'll generate all these fonts. Uh, Sally is 100% free, so you need to download it. You'll probably need to search Google to figure out how to download and install, download and install fonts on your computer. So do that before we get started here. So um, you want to find a font that has really thick downstrokes and thin upstrokes. And I will tell you that's gonna be easy to connect because we need all of these letters to be connected. It's gonna be easy to connect um, the letters together when we get into this DIY. So I'm just gonna open up a new Inkscape um, canvas here. I'm gonna click on the create text box or create and edit text objects. I'm gonna create a text object, create a text box. I know that in state face, Indiana is a capital O, so I'm gonna hold down the shift key and type in an O. I'm also gonna hold down the shift key and hit the left arrow key to highlight it. And up here, I'm just gonna start typing in state face, whoops, until it shows up. I'm gonna click on the cursor, make sure my proportions are locked, and I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger. I'm also gonna make another text box, and I'm gonna type in the name Sally. And I'm gonna highlight that using the shift key and the left arrow key as well. And I'm gonna start typing in ballpark. And I'm gonna click on the cursor, make sure my proportions are locked and make this bigger. Now, I'm gonna work on Sally here for a second. If you have watched my how to make uh, offset or how to put an offset around an image to create a sticker in Cricut Explore so you don't have to print with the bleed if you want that white area that's around uh, some planner stickers, I'm gonna show you uh, that's gonna be a similar process here. So what we need to do to make this not be a font anymore is under path, we need to take object to path. And then we're going to right click and ungroup and what that does is, if you're familiar with Silhouette where you can release the compound path, that's what it is. It's breaking everything apart. What we wanna do is to be able to connect this A to this S when we do our uh, offset there. So I'm gonna use Control and I'm gonna use the mouse, the scroll on my mouse to zoom in. I'm also gonna click this Edit Paths by Nodes uh, little arrow here and I'm gonna click on the A. You can see a little red line pops up around um, the letter that if you want to click on it. And then we're just going to take these little boxes and drag them over. Make sure you're clicking on the box. Drag them over to meet with the S. If you think that it looks a little bit too, I don't know, weird and you think it needs a little bit more of a curve, you can just double click on the outline 
and that will give you a new node to work from. So if you think it looks good, zoom out. That looks pretty, pretty good, I think. Then we're going to go here and we're going to do union. And that union is important because when we take this vector over into Cricut Design Space, we want to make sure that it's cutting this out continuously, not cutting out every single letter. So that is important. You need to do that step. Now, what we want to do is create the uh, layered effect to this SVG. You want to have a back layer um, that is the base layer, the background, and then you also want to have the font, the shape, as a layer as well. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to click on my Indiana here. I'm going to go to fill bounded areas. You want to make sure that fill by is set to alpha. You can leave this threshold alone. The grow or shrink by so many odd pixels is what we're going to change to make the offset be different. Um, be Make the second, the background a little bit bigger. So I am going to change this, I believe, like 50 is a good number for this Indiana. I've done this a few times trying to get this right for you all. So you just want to make sure that you're clicking inside of the Indiana shape. And then we'll just highlight it, select it uh, using the cursor key, and lower the selection to the bottom. That moves the layer to the bottom. So that's pretty good. Um, I'm actually going to make that a little bit smaller. Let's make it 40 and do that same thing again. I don't want it to be like a huge offset. That looks pretty good. Um, you can change the colors if you want right now, but since this is an SVG file, we can change the layers in Cricut Design Space. You can change the colors however you want. Another key thing you want to do is repeat the Shift Control C or the path object to path thing on this. And I'm going to do, I'm not going to do that yet because I want to show you the error that you're going to get if you don't do that. That's how you know you've done something wrong. First, I'm going to take this Sally and I'm going to cut it and I'm going to paste it. I think I already have. No, I haven't. Paste it into a new document because we want to create two um, SVG files. We don't want to have these on the same canvas because otherwise we're going to have to cut them the same and we're going to have to, uh, or cut them at the same time. They're going to have to be under their restrictions that they are grouped together and we don't want that. So just make a new canvas. So now we can do the offset around Sally. So we'll go over here to fill bounded areas, make sure this is alpha. I find that the bigger this number here, the bigger this background, the cooler that it looks. These are really popular to have glitter as the text or glitter as the background. So the bigger the background, the more of a contrast between your name and the bubble background around it. So we'll just click inside the S and let's see here, I think I might want to make this a little bit bigger. I don't think that's big enough. So I'm going to delete that. We'll go over to offset. I am going to, let's see, 100. See how that works. Click inside the S. Oh yeah, when you get this crazy bubbly looking stuff, you know it's going to be good. So that might be a little bit too big. Let's try, what do we do? 80 and then we did 100. Let's try 95. Oops, and see how that works. Then we just click in there. Okay, I think that might be a little bit better. Yeah. Um, so we want to bring this back up to the front, and you want to get rid of these all these little holes. So we're going to go to that Edit Paths by Nodes thing again. Hold down your Control key and zoom in. And you just want to delete these squares. So make sure you click on the squares and then just hit your Delete key until they're all gone. Every single one. And we can send that layer to the bottom. So I think that's pretty cool. So now we want to save this as an SVG. If you just go File, Save As, it's going to save as an Inkscape SVG. I'm going to overwrite this Sally that I already made. And we're going to hit Save and Replace. I'm also going to go over here and hit File, Save As, and I'm going to overwrite this Indiana that I already made, Save, Replace, and I'm going to show you the error that you get if you don't release that path. Um, it's going to, the Cricut is going to try to read this as a font or something, <laughs> and it's not going to like it. So once we go over here to 
Cricut Design Space, we'll go to Upload Images. You can see under the Images file, I've already uploaded a Sally, but you can upload a JPEG, a GIF, a PNG, a Bitmap, an SVG, which is what we're going to do, or a DXF file. So go to Upload Image, Browse, we're going to click on Indiana, and we're going to Open. You can see you get this error. It's, it's because the, the Indiana shape is still a font. So we're going to hit Continue, and you see that half of your Indiana is not there. So you want to cancel and go back over here to Indiana, and you want to click on the actual font that you made, the actual Indiana shape. Then you want to hold down Control-Shift-C, or do the path, object to path. You can see nothing really happened, but we can right-click and then ungroup, file, save it again, minimize this, go back, upload image, browse, Indiana, and it doesn't give you that error because it's no longer a font. So we'll click Save As, or I'm sorry, Save. Then we're going to upload our Sally. Browse, Sally, open, save. And we're going to add these two. And they're so huge. Are they grouped together? No, they're not. Let's group them. Hold down the Shift key and select all of them. Edit. And I'm just going to make the size a little bit smaller so we can see them here. Now, if you click on the layers pane, you can see that Sally is one layer and the red bubbly part is another layer. And we can also see that the Indiana, the back part is a layer and the front part is another layer. I will link down below a how to um, make a paperclip um, DIY tutorial I did on my blog. Um, basically, I'm going to hide this and I'm only going to cut Indiana first. I found that about 1.5 is probably going to be a good size for the Indiana. What you want to do, you can change the colors. You can go over here. We can make the Indiana cream and you can make this yellow, whatever you want to do. What I like to do is um, right click and copy this and then paste it. And we'll go back over to edit and mirror because you want to have a back and a front to your paper clip. So we can go back over here to the layers and find our Sally and click the um, eyeball to show it again. You can also right click and copy and paste and hit uh, edit and mirror. Um, you're going to get that same effect. You'll just have to flip these around when you put them together and you can read it from both sides. Um, and it looks like about three inches is probably going to be a good, good size. I would say for a paperclip with a name, you might have to do some test cuts to see how the, um, the loops and stuff will come out. But basically then what you just do is I'm going to hide Sally and we'll cut Indiana. Whoops. You just hit go and it's going to show you the different layers. You'll cut this one and cut this one, and then you'll assemble it together. So once you've done all your cutting, you should have something like this. So we mirrored the Indiana and cut out, or the state, whatever state that you're using, and cut out the two shapes. Um, when I was in the screencast, I did forget to tell you, I was saying like if you've flipped over, um, uh, copied and pasted and made a mirror image of your name, it's gonna get kind of weird. I did forget to mention that you do want to um, select your name, right click while you're in Cricut Design Space, and select ungroup, and then you want to duplicate and mirror this back piece, the back color, so you get something like this so that you can have the backing to your paper clip. So you should have something like this, two mirror image kind of things. What you want to do is use an adhesive. I opened it, but I'm going to close it back up here. I'm going to use Mod Podge, Mod Podge. Um, and it's, this is just the one that I have for fabric. It doesn't really matter, I don't believe. Um, as long as you have, I just find a liquid adhesive like this is very, very helpful. You could use Elmer's glue, you could use tacky glue, you could use like whatever that you have. And I'm just going to paint some glue on the back of my Indiana here. I'm getting some fuzz in the glue. And I'm just gonna place it trying to center it. And I like that you, if you use liquid glue, you can kind of move your, use your fingers and move the um, state around to make sure it's in the center. And then I'll just repeat the process for this guy. 
my couch is squeaky. Every time I lean forward on the couch, it squeaks, and my dog's running around behind me. And then you can just move it around like that. And so you have two Indianas. And then I'm also going to paint on the back of the Mo of my name some glue. And this is just like a paintbrush I got from Martha Stewart brand at one point in time in my creative crafty career. And you kind of want to make sure that you're getting all the little nooks and crannies. So this might be better if you were on a surface that you could get glue on. And this does dry clear, so I'm not 100% worried about getting it everywhere, if you know what I mean. Oop. And then just place it down, working your best to get it centered. So I did end up having to like put this under something to press it down to make sure it's stuck because of the glitter. Um, the next thing that you're going to need are paper clips. I got these gold paper clips from Hobby Lobby. There's one bigger paper clip in here. This is like finding a very specific paper clip in a stack of paper clips. What is that? Like when you're looking for, there it is, a needle in a haystack, but you're looking for a very specific needle and a pile of needles. Um, okay, so this one is a big paper clip and this one is like a tiny paper clip. I think that this is going to look better on a bigger paper clip. So I just, um, I think this is the only one of those that I have. Um, you wanna make sure that you're putting like the trombone, the two U's are down in the down direction and you're putting the clippy do on one you. So what I'm gonna do is turn these over and I'm gonna use this adhesive, it's called E6000, E6000. It's my favorite adhesive in general, if one can have a favorite adhesive because it sticks anything to anything for the most part. And what I do is I use this to add the paper clip to the back of the um, paperclip topper because it's just so strong and it holds the, it can hold the paperclip on really well. This is one of my favorite adhesives and it's really a pain in the butt for the most part to get it out of the bottle. <laughs> so you can see, got a little dollop here. That was a hard. So I'm kind of gonna put it in the middle, I guess here, and you really only need like a dollop like that and then I'll press the paper clip in like that. I'm gonna put a little bit more because I moved it. And then I use the adhesive the liquid glue, I don't know why I keep calling it adhesive, I mean, that's what it is, but I'll use the tacky glue or this Mod Podge or whatever kind of glue that's liquid enough to be spread around as what will adhere the rest or the rest of the paper clip. And then you can just do this. You will possibly need to find a surface to press this under so you can see you have it like that, and that's a paper clip. Paper clip! So you might need, you can either use some binder clips, sometimes I'll just put binder clips around the edge, little mini ones, and that presses it together, or you could probably press it between a book or whatnot to make it stay. So I'm gonna do the same thing here with the Indiana. And this tube is metal, and if you bend it, it will bust. So you can see various places it's busted and it's leaking out now. <laughs> um, it's my favorite adhesive, but it's messy as heck. It's ridiculous. And I'm just going to take the paper clip and press it into there and paint some adhesive around the edges.
Yeah, and some of the edges are coming off on this because it's curling because it's getting moist. But you can just sit and hold it between your fingers or press it between a book. You can also use some other Cricut um, cartridges or whatever you call them. I'm not sure what they're called because I'm very, I, I never had a Cricut when it actually had cartridges. I'm just calling these like images um, or clip art or whatever. So I cut out these little glasses and I think these would be super cute if I can pick them up. Would be super cute, like glued on like that. Planner nerd Indiana, you know? So we can just paint some glue on the back of this. I'm being a little bit careful because it's really, really thin. You can mirror it on the back side as well. Actually, that's not how Indiana faces. Isn't this how Indiana faces? Yes, it is. So, see, if this was Virginia, I would know exactly how Virginia faced. Ugh. So, we'll just put this one on what is the front now. And the reason I do this, like, mirroring kind of thing is because you want to be able to see it from the back and the front. I just think that is... So like if you're looking at your planner this way and then you flip the page, it's going to be that way too. So, whoops, I moved the paper clip. So yeah, so that is how you make a name and a state paper clip using Inkscape, some free fonts, and the Cricut Explorer. I hope that you enjoyed this little tutorial and that it helped you out in all your paper clip crafting needs. <laughs> if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'm trying to get these in the center here. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I will also leave a unicorn cut file. I have an SVG cut file for a unicorn um, paper clip, which is like this one right here. So you can make that. I have the free cut file you can upload into um, Cricut Design Space and make your own little unicorn paper clip in the same sort of way. You don't have to design it from scratch. So yeah, stick around for more Cricut related videos, more planner related videos, and I will talk to you on my next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.